Hi, my name is Nick Caruso, and today we'll be doing a training on how to do a conditional split on a multi-page document based upon the change in a value in a zone in that document. So I have a seven-page batch here. It's a seven-page batch of invoices, and it's actually three invoices. So this is invoice one, which is page one of two. I'll go ahead and zoom in in a second. So page one, page two, and you can see the invoice number changed here, page one of three. And lastly, the invoice number changed again, 49, page 1 of 2, and 2 of 2. So I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Going back to the start, page 1 of 2, page 1 of 3, page 1 of 2. So how can we go ahead and, and split that conditionally? So I'm going to go ahead and build an AutoStore workflow on how to do that. So I'm going to bring up AutoStore here, click New, and... I'm going to build an auto capture task to support this. So auto capture, send to folder, and I want to, I want to split that um, document as it's going through. So before, the, before I do this, I want to leverage NSI's best practices for how I should organize a folder structure. So I've got my sample document here and I'm going to create a couple folders. I'm going to create a CFG folder here for my configuration files. I want to create my samples folder. I want to create a output folder for my test output processes. And I want to create a temporary work area folder for where my temporary files are going to be. And in my temporary work area for folder I'm going to create a, a subfolder for each of my tasks. So I have a task called auto capture. I want a task home directory. There's usually a capture home directory and a reject and a working. So these are my temporary folders that I'm going to use in my auto capture task. You don't have to do this. Uh, this is just a good practice here for your um, from a, from a best practice perspective where to put your temporary files. So if I double click back in, into my uh, task properties, and I could do that again by going into task properties here, I want to change my temporary folder. You can see here it's it's a GUID in here, but I, I can go ahead and change that to task home. And again, this is optional. Under my preferences for auto capture, I'm going to change that to capture home. And have my rejects go to my reject folder. Again, what I just did is optional. It's just a good practice where to map your temporary files. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save this configuration now. So I'm going to save it into my my. This is again the root of the folder structures that I just created. So CFG, and I like naming my CFG pretty much the same way as my parent folder structure. So training. OCR split, and I like to put usually a date stamp. So this is version 02 May 2013. All right, so I've built my end-to-end -end workflow, uh, or I've just created the shell of it. So I'm going to create a form called split, and I'm going to right now, just for a crawl walk run approach, put in a field for split sequence, and then I'm going to say send it to a folder right now and my folder I'll just put it in this way I'll just specify so uh, output is that folder structure and let's put a file name and a counter okay so I haven't done anything right now except use the auto capture to build, build a workflow and send to a folder. I haven't actually done the split yet. So I'm going to go ahead and save my config and restart it. Alright, so I have a config up and running. I'm going to go to my samples directory, which is my, my TIFF file here, and I'm going to open up another window to show my output directory. Oops. Okay, output here. <clears throat> so if I right click on my, my TIFF image, send to split, it should pop in here in just a few seconds. Here we go. So I haven't actually split yet, but I just have the framework for.
putting a split sequence. So if I wanted to split on pages 2 and 5, let's say 2 comma 5, it'll pop in here. It hasn't actually split yet, it's just going to pop in here, right? So now let's go back to our config and split on that split sequence of pages. So after page 2 it's going to split and after page 5 it's going to split. So I'm going to scroll up here. We have a in our professional image management component. If I go ahead and configure that, activate, bunch of image cleanup settings that we can do. I can go to split. I can say split on every two pages. I can say split on empty pages. So I'm going to say split on pages two comma five. But I'm going to use uh, my RRT from auto capture, so it'll be conditional based upon that RRT value. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save, restart, and I will now go back to my folder structure, right click, send to split. So if I say 2 comma 5, it should split after pages 2 and 5, and here we go. So let's open this image up. You can see here page 1 of 2, that's document 1, that's document 2, and that's document three. So this goes back and forth between pages and this goes back and forth between documents. So I could play around with this just to show you different split sequences. So um, split on just maybe page three. So this should give me um, one through three, I guess, and four through seven, maybe. I don't know. So yeah, one through three, one, two, three, and then four through seven. Well, pages four through seven. Okay? So we know we can manually specify this RRT setting 2 through 5 to get the sequence split sequence that we want and we're going to use professional image management to do that split but we need we now need to do it intelligently so the way we're going to do that is we're going to first do a zonal OCR on those coordinates and then we're going to have to use some um, scripting in order to um, analyze those zones and, and automatically determine that split sequence that we're manually putting in an auto capture. So let's first look at this zonal OCR piece. So I'm going to add Abby to my workflow, which is our, our um, OCR component. Abby's a, a really phenomenal technology. You can do a lot with it. So I'm going to say go ahead and um, activate, pass through yes. So I want to keep the original TIFF image and I'm going to say do a zoned OCR. I have to hit apply before I go into these settings. I'm going to take a look at my sample document. I'm going to draw a zone around that area that I, I'm expecting. I could really granularly go in there, but because the documents can shift when they be then when they're scanned and so forth, I want to make the zone pretty big. I want to say recognize zone on all pages. I'm going to call this my invoice number zone and the output of this is going to be an RRT per zone but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to say export my zones to a CSV file and then I'm going to click OK. I don't need to output a PDF so I just want to output do that zoned OCR and output that, that CSV file and I'm going to turn off PIM right just for right now so you can so we can take a look at this workflow okay so let's go back to our test workflow here send to split this isn't actually I, mean, I, I turned off professional image, image management for the split sequence and I'm going to go ahead and open up status monitor so I can see what's going on behind the scenes roll over to the auto capture tab you can see here it's crunching through the different pages. So it outputted both the original TIFF and the CSV file. And uh, it went pretty fast. So you can see here it was taking about uh, about a second a page, maybe two seconds a page. Um, so what I want to do is I actually I'm going to be doing this several times. So I really want the OCR to be as fast as possible as I'm testing this out. So I'm going to go back into my Abbey settings here and I'm going to say fast recognition. This r makes it usually go maybe twice as fast at at only a little bit of expense of the quality. I'm going to turn this off again. I'm, I'm just trying to make this run as fast as possible because I am going to be iterating through this several times. 
So by the way, here's my TIFF and my CSV. Let me um, let me just run through this again so we can take a look at take a look at what's happening here. So opening up Status Monitor, let's see how that fast sequence, that fast OCR, if it made any difference at all. And you can see here it's a little bit faster. Now it's taking about one second. All right, so let's wait for it to pop up into our output folder. All right, so we've got our TIFF and we've got our CSV. I'm going to open up the CSV in Notepad++. And I have in Notepad++, just so you could see it, let me get rid of that file here, I have um, show symbol end of line. And the reason I just want to do that is just to make sure that you guys could see view show symbol end of line, that there's a new line ca um, carriage return here. So when I told Abby to output a CSV, it outputted one line per result of that zone. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to be using a script file here to go through each of these lines and build that page split sequence RRT that the professional image management component is expecting. And so that's going to be the hard part. So I've let's just kind of recap. I've got professional image management that can accept an RRT here for the split sequence. I've used my Abbey component to do the zonal OCR, which is going to output this CSV file. Oh, that's weird. Anyway, to output the CSV file. And so now I need to build some logic in script to parse through a CSV file, look for these, these new zone sequences, and build that RRT on the fly. So that's the next step in this, in this training course. All right, so let, let's add a VB script component to this workflow here. So I'm going to, under my process component, I'm going to add VB script before my base, uh, professional image management. Go ahead and save that. So the VB script component allows me to do a tremendous amount of things in Autostore. So I'm, I'm going to call my script split. It's going to have an on event, on load event, and an on unload. On, uh, on unload is very rare to use. In the five years I've been at NSI, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever used it. But uh, the the on load is obviously the most important one. So I'm going to create a folder in here called code files, a subfolder I should say, and I'm going to name this split.vbs. All right, so let's. The first thing I'm going to do as I'm as I'm calling this is I'm just going to output a uh, a status message box called eko dot status message. And what I want to do is I want first want to get a handle on. I, I want to be able to read that CSV file, read through each line of that CSV file, uh, look for a change in the invoice number. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to build a, a subroutine, a test subroutine, to do that, to test all that stuff outside of Autostore. So I'm going to create a test subroutine, and I'm just going to say message box, hello. And I'm going to say call test. And what's nice is when I hit the compile button within the Autostore IDE here, it will call test, which will call this subroutine, and output a hello. Here we go. So what I can do here is I can do a lot of my coding and hit compile and do a lot and, and do some tests here. So let's do a test to read our CSV file. So I have a, I have some code here I just copied and pasted called read text file Unicode. So if I open up my go back to my CSV output here, we're gonna have to read this. So let's open it up in in Notepad plus plus. So I can see here just. This is pretty technical, but on the bottom right, I can see here it's a Unicode text file. Most most text files are ANSI, but um, coming out of the Abbey engine is a, is a Unicode text file, and and the reason for that is because um, ANSI doesn't support special characters or or the range of special characters. Unicode does. So if you were doing this in a German character set or international character character set, it would appropriately be be shown in here. All right, so I have a helper function here that I've just copied and pasted that I use a lot, which reads, you, you pass in a text file into this helper function, and it's going to output an array of each line. So in my 
Uh, so let's call that helper file and let's pass in, just for right now, the output of this CSV. If I hit compile now, you'll see it, it, there were no errors. It compiled and did the message box hello. Let's just go in here right now and for each, if I'm going reading this text file, it's going to, it will, it will open up the file, it's going to loop through each line in the file, adding each line to an array. And let's just do a message box to output the value in, in each of those array items. So name value, and you can see here it's iterating through here. Okay, that's great. So let's let's do this. So this is going to be, I'm going to create an array called lines, set my array value to the output of this function. And what I want to do now is say for each line, which is a new variable, in array of lines, let's just output that line. I hit compile. You can see here it's outputting each value in that line. So what I want to do though is is you'll if I go back to my text file, I only want to grab this value in each line. And the way to do that is to use a regular expression. So if you're not familiar with regu regular expressions, I highly recommend you go through training tutorial. Um, but here's a very simple way of doing this. So I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to do regular expression tester. And there's plenty of regular expression testing utilities out there. Uh, I just randomly pick one of them. And this allows me to to take one of these lines, put it in down here, and build a regular expression up here to, to just to test my regular expression. Bracket 0 through 9 means a digit that's 0 through 9. So you can see here it found 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 digits uh, in my uh, line. Well, I want to say a 9 digit that's repeated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It has to be repeated at least 7 times in a row. So now you can see they only found one match, which is great. So this is my regular expression. The one thing you've got to be careful about when you're doing regular expressions is to make sure you're not going to get any false positives, which means that's, that a result which is accurate, which is which matches correctly but maybe isn't accurate. So maybe it would say invoice number, and maybe the line may also say uh, account number, and the account number is something like that, and you can see now it matched it twice. So it got that one. Let's do this. Let's not use. Okay. So yeah, there were there are now two numbers in this line that are at least seven digits. So I want to be very very careful about how to how to you know I want only want this one. So if I know that each of my invoice numbers maybe on, always begin with with nine eight, I'm gonna pref I'm gonna say um, my match must start with nine eight, and then instead of seven I'm gonna say five. So now I know that this regular expression is the regular expression to extract the correct number out of this line. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, move back into my text file. I'm just going to put a comment in here. Match a regex against that. Copy and paste a couple of helper files here that I, I know. So I'm going to initiate my regular expression in in, in uh, VB script and I'm going to be using this pattern. Okay. To execute that regular expression, I do that. So set matches, run the regular expression on that line. It should come back with matches. And I want to say if matches.count is greater than zero, then output, let's just output the, the match. So matches is not going to be an array. Let's output the first value in the array. And there we go. So it's just outputting now the the result of that regular expression out of that line in this in this array. Okay, so that's really great. So I'm getting four seven for one two times, then four eight three times, and then four nine two times. That's great. Uh, what I want to do now is each line here. I want to know what line that regular expression was found on. So let's just do let's create a new variable called page counter. 
let's set that to zero. So the first line is going to have I, I want to ignore that. And then this will be this is really this is really this line here, which is line number two, really represents page number one. And then line three represents page number two, line four re represents page number three, and so forth. So I want to first do this. I want to do let's always increment page counter equals page counter plus one as we loop through here. So I really want to start maybe at negative one. Well, no, I should say zero. Okay. Uh, what's not? Yeah, that's not correct. I want to start at negative one, and then it's going to say so. Page counter will always be one off because I, I I don't want to include this first line. So in this my message box, I want to output the page counter and then the applicable match. So now if I hit compile, page one, so it it, it page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, great. Now I, I only want to output my message box if my value has changed from the last value. So now we have to store the last value, last invoice number. So let's set that to blank. So let's set the last invoice number to the current match. And then we can say if the current match does not equal the same value as the last value, whoops, then, then let's output this. So one, now three, and now six. So that's what so we're 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 getting the right sequence here. So one, three, and six are where the values change. So that's looking pretty good. So now what I want to do is I want to really put the number one, three, and six in a string. So instead of calling this um, this test right now, let's say get split sequence, and we'll make that instead of a subroutine of function so it'll actually return back a value. So let's call get split sequence and I'm going to create I'm just going to say returns a split sequence such as um, 1, 3, 5. Alright, so I'm going to create a variable here called split sequence And I'm going to set split sequence to initially be empty. And what I want to do here is that whenever I, whenever I want to say that I've got a change in my invoice number, I'm going to say split sequence equals my page counter, or, or the original split sequence, and my page counter. And then I'm going to return, out of get split sequence, I'm going to return that split sequence variable and now I will call message box get split sequence which should then call this function return my split sequence in here and I hit compile that's still looping through one three five one three six and then concatenates all this together so I don't want one three six I want one comma three comma six so let's let's get rid of this guy and let's do split sequence let's add a comma in between. So now if I do it, I'm going to get 1, 3, 6. So I don't want the first comma. I just want 1, comma, 3, comma, 6. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to say if the length of split sequence, which is a string, if it's greater than 0, which means there's already content in there, there's already been a split sequence, then let's add that comma. So we'll append it if if the sequence now is greater than zero. And now if we hit compile, now we're good. One, comma, three, comma, six. So this is a good uh this is exactly what we want, except for one thing. 
the if we ran this through professional image management right now, it would get the first page and then split after the first page. So we really want to split before this number. So this should really be like 0, 2, and 5. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do page counter minus 1. So now we have 0, 2, 5. So this is great. So we have now this function called get split sequence that that will read this CSV file and return back a split sequence based on the change in this regular expression. So let's make this function a little bit more helpful. Let's say what's your reg regex profile and what's the file name and so the regex profile will be passed in as a variable and the file name will be passed in as a variable. So now my regex profile will be this and my file name will be that. And this is great. So this is working exactly as I want now. So now I have this this sub this function that I pass in a regular expression profile to to determine um, whenever that changes out of out of these different pages, give me back a split sequence and here's the file. So what I can do up here is I can take this exact helper function I just wrote and I can bring it into AutoStore now and pass in the temporary file in AutoStore to get the split sequence. So we're going to do that next. Alright, so this is the continuation training now of integrating the script code now into the actual um, AutoStore VBScript function. So it's this isn't so what I want to do here is I have to understand that I'm going to be getting you'll be getting two documents at this stage. One is the original TIFF and two is the CSV. I have to find the CSV, find the split sequence, then delete the CSV from my knowledge object. So a knowledge object is the container that contains uh, multiple documents as well as RTs. So a KO contains multiple, well it could be zero, zero or more KDs, which are knowledge documents. Alright, what I need to do here is say for i equals zero, so I'm going to loop through each of my documents. So knowledge, I already have this written, so let me make sure I type it correctly. So for i equals 0 to the number of documents in my knowledge object, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find the CSV. Now it'll probably always be like the second element or a, a constant element, but let's just, I want to do this the right way. So I want to get the document, I want to get the document from my knowledge object passing in i, which is the index in this array of documents. And so I'm using the AutoStore SDK here to now get the path to this document. So this document is on the temporary file system somewhere right now or when it runs it and then the file extension. And I want to now if 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 my file extension equals CSV then do something. And I always want to make sure I'm going to be okay here. So I'm going to uppercase my CS, my file extension just to make sure it matches the CSV. All right. And so I want to do now pass CSV to get split sequence. Get the result, create a new RT in AutoStore, then delete the CSV file. Apparently I can't type the word the too well today. All right. So sp let's uh, split sequence. I'm going to call this. Actually, I might as well just copy and paste this whole line. And I'm going to be using my file path here to get my split sequence, which is really great. And then I'm going to do knowledge object dot remove document i 
So I'm going to get my split sequence. I haven't done this yet, but create new RRT, and now I'll remove that that CSV file from my knowledge object. Um, now there, I think there's a bug in AutoStore right now in the SDK because right now I will remove the wrong index. You always, have, you always have to do I plus one. So I think the remove document is is one element off. I'm going to confirm that, but out of my testing right now, I know that you have to do a plus one. So let me let me add a comment in here. So on uh, today day today's date, which is second of May, potential bug in SDK and removing document requiring index plus one. I'm I'm just putting this in there just in case it may get changed in the future. All right, so I need to create a new RRT. Um, in order to do that, I need to get access to what we call the topic. So knowledge content get topic interface, which is the topic. And the way you create a new RRT is to do topic.replace. I know it doesn't make much sense. You would think topic.new, but it's topic.replace. You name your RRT, split sequence, and let's pass in the split sequence value that I'm getting from this fun function. I might as well exit my for loop when I'm done here. You probably want to be careful if, you, if you're doing this again in the future for some other reason. I'm removing a document here which will now change the length of my knowledge object array. So if I were to do this and I, I would have to get maybe multiple documents in this loop, I would probably be going backwards instead of forwards, but that's another advanced type of class. But this should be done and I should be ready to go and I, I'll now pass this to my professional image management. Uh, but I, what I want to do is just do a couple more helper functions in here, or I mean, um, logging output so I can just understand what's going on uh, in, my, in Status Monitor. So I'm just, I'm just going to output some helper files or helper logic in here just to output what's happening on in my log. So my file extension, I'm going to say found, found a CSV file. And I'm going to say split sequence. I'll put that to my log. And I'm going to say process or split complete. Now, maybe I would want to do some error trapping in here. Uh, but for right now, this should be good to go. One thing I'll, I definitely want to make sure is to comment this out because right now, if I compile this, you'll see it still outputs. The, um, that message box. So if it ran at runtime, that message box would be popping up. We couldn't see it and it would be hanging the service. So let's make sure we comment that out. We'll compile again. No problems then. And so this is the new RT that's going to be created. So now let's go into professional image management, activate split, and let's change it to our that RT. And let's go back into Abby. Let's remove, or not Abby, the, um, the auto capture form. Let's remove that field because we don't need any more. Let's go ahead and save through here and restart our config. Okay, so now let's run through this test again. Send to, well, let me, let me delete this guy. Send to split, submit, and let's look in status monitor as it's going through the workflow here. So because we did it fast, we turn on that, those fast settings, it should be taking about a, a second per page. All right, and that looks like it worked perfectly. We saw the file extension was TIFF, and then, and then the file extension was CSV. We made it uppercase, so it said then said found a CSV file. It ran through the split sequence. It found 025. Then with split complete, it then created that RRT called split sequence. We passed it to professional image management. It did the splitting and it split out three images. And if we go to our output folder here, we can see that we have three images. Let's just make sure it was correct. So 4.7, page one of two, 4.7, two of two. I'm gonna go to my next document now. 4.8, one of three, 4.8, two of three, 4.8, three of three, and my next document now. 49 pages 1 of 2 and 2 of 2 we are complete so i'm going to go ahead and delete these three remaining images i'm going to keep this one because we were doing some tests with those um, 
in the VB script in case you ever want to run that again. And let me go back to the parent folder. So just in summer, we have a CFG file in here that we built. We have a code file in here, which is that split sequence. We have the, the output folder. We have our sample folder, which is this file here. And we have our work area folder, which is just our temporary files. If we go into auto store, we built a config that was auto capture, Abby to do that zonal OCR. It created a CSV file. It, app it appended the CSV file to our knowledge object. So by the time it went into VB script, I have now my original TIFF image coming in here, plus my CSV file. In VB script, we're, we're reading the CSV file. We're looking for the invoice numbers. We're looking for a change in those invoice numbers, which we're then creating that split sequence RRT. We're passing that split sequence RRT to professional image management, which is splitting up the documents and then sending it to its final destination. So I'm uploading this entire config and this video. If you have any questions, please contact me at nick.caruso at nsius.com. Thank you.